Cajamarca summarizes, in its architecture, the meeting of two cultures, Inca and Spanish. His archaeological past tells us, however, more ancient stories, turn to the Caxamarca culture, around 800 AD, to its aqueducts and enigmatic petroglyphs and other even more remote civilizations. Just eight kilometers from the city, in the district of Banyas del Inca, the small streets of Otuzco stand out in the middle of nature, the word Otuzco, or Otuzco, originates in Oto, which means, eaten by moths, in reference to the shape and look of the small windows. Could it be a necropole of a pre-Inca village, prior to the Caxamarca culture, of proven wary influence? Hundreds of galleries and individual niches, which are attached to small windows, perforated in the volcanic rock, they are 8 and 10 meters deep, their entrances are rectangular or quadrangular cut 50 to 60 centimeters high. Tradition has it that the Incas emptied the interior of the rock and gave the niches a different use, converting them into a grain store, in Quechua, Calca, they redirected the entrances against the wind to keep them fresh. Through some small entrances it is possible to enter the dark and mysterious galleries, whose final unreachable, inspired the imagination of men in the creation of secret corridors that linked Cajamarca to Cusco. Personally, I don't believe it's just imagination. The existence of these lost goods gave rise to a series of surprising stories, such as the one that indicated that behind the Coracancha there would be the entrance to a grotto called the Great Chingana or Chincana, meaning labyrinth, which would lead to the fortress of Sacsayhuaman, to the north of Cusco, and from there to the Great Petiti, the city of riches, a secret enclave to this day hidden in the thickness of the jungle. According to myth, Prince Choke Aki or Golden Prince fled along this road. Like Atahualpa and Tupac Walpa, he was another brother of Huascar, and, before the beginning of the war for the succession of his father Huayna Capac, he left the palace of Amarucancha taking the mummy of his father, his golden statue and the sacred image of the sun. His entourage was made up of the Amautas, the teachers, the Quipacamaics, who are the accountants of the empire, the virgins of the sun, the priests, and part of the nobility. Everyone was heading to the mysterious Paititi. Fact or fiction, so far no one knows. Someone who has faith, Inca faith. After the capture in the town of Cajamarca by Pizarro's men of the last Inca emperor, Atahualpa, the latter offered to fill two rooms with silver and one with gold, as far as his hand could reach, so that he would be released. He sent the order throughout the Inca empire to send as much gold and silver as possible to Cajamarca. Pizarro, distrustful, also ordered three of his men to travel to the capital of the kingdom, Cusco, which at the moment he had not yet dared to enter, to supervise the fulfillment of the emperor's promise. It was specifically in the Temple of the Sun or Coracancha, or in what is now the convent of Santo Domingo, where the three Spaniards were left speechless when contemplating the immense riches that were treasured there. Sheets of gold weighing two kilos each covered the stone blocks inside and outside the temple, in which there was even room for a garden with reproductions of animals, plants and trees in gold, several statues also in solid gold and all of this. And, occupying a prominent place, a huge golden solar disc on the main altar of the Coracancha, in Quechua, Kuri Cancha, or Golden Temple. There were so many riches that were kept in the Coracancha compound that the three Spaniards sent by Pizarro were only able to return to Cajamarca with a minimal part of what their eyes could see. Despite this, the great conqueror Francisco Pizarro was greatly surprised with the news of everything his men could see, as well as with the material they had managed to bring to his presence, which finally decided him to advance with his fighting force on the capital of the empire. While some think that Pizarro later ordered the execution of Atahualpa in order to keep all the Inca treasure and not just the promised ransom, there are those who believe that, after Atahualpa's ascension to power after a bloody civil war against his brother Huascar shortly before after the arrival of the Spanish, the latter's supporters pressured the Spanish conqueror to eliminate him and thus be able to regain power. After the execution on July 26, 1533 of Inca No. 13 Atahualpa, many revolts and uprisings occurred throughout the empire, being repressed by the Spanish thanks in part to the followers of the deposed and ill-fated Huascar, whose execution had been ordered by Atahualpa and whose remains were thrown into the Yanameo River. Walls of the Sacsayhuaman Fortress, the fortress located north of the city of Cusco, and which according to tradition is related to one of the most important entrances to the enigmatic Inca Labyrinth, the one known as La Chincana Grande. 
For many years, the Spaniards tried to locate the entrance to this mythical underground world to find the treasure they had coveted so much, but not only did they not find it but, as many chronicles of the time say, few managed to get out of the labyrinth. A perfectly documented case is the one that occurred in 1624, where three men, Francisco Rueda, Juan Hinojosa and Antonio Oru, entered a gallery located on the Sacsayhuaman side. This initiative had aroused enormous expectation in Cusco, with a large number of curious people accompanying them to the entrance to the grotto. They tied themselves to the end of a long rope, leaving the other in the care of the witnesses, they subsequently disappeared inside and were never heard from again. The only reliable proof of the existence of hidden treasures occurred in the year 1700. According to these same chroniclers, some students entered a tunnel located in Sacsayhuaman, with the firm intention of locating the hidden treasure that was denied to Pizarro. Only one of its members left the labyrinth alive when ten days had passed after his incursion, but he brought with him a valuable discovery, a solid gold ear of corn from the gold garden of the Temple of the Sun which was later recast into two crowns for the Virgin of the Cusco Convent of Santo Domingo, located on the old Inca temple, and which is preserved today by the monks. In 1590, the Mercedarian father Fray Martín de Murúa warned in Chapter 9 of his History of the Incas, Kings of Peru, about the existence of these tunnels and the serious danger of entering inside them. According to him, this brave Captain Ossi Topa was the one who, by order of his father, made a path underground in the fortress of this city of Cusco to Coricancha, which was where they had the temple and oratory of the sun and the moon, and all the other huacas that they worshipped, until the entrance of this hole in the said fortress where they called the Chincana, although everything is already lost and finished, because there is no one who can figure out where it is going, but it is only the entrance, because, when entering some distance they get lost and cannot find their way back. Because not even in the said place of Coricancha there is no memory of it and they say that the Inca ordered it to be closed so that no one would enter inside. In the same way, the Inca Garcileso de la Vega pointed out in his work Royal Commentaries of the Incas, in the year 1609, a network of underground passages, as long as the towers themselves were all connected. The system was composed of streets and avenues branching in all directions, all with identical doors. It was so complicated that not even the bravest dared to enter the labyrinth without an orientation guide that consisted of a roll of rope or thick thread tied to the entrance door to be unwound as one advanced through the tunnels. When I was a child I used to go to the fort with the boys my age, but we did not dare to go very far, always staying in places where there was sunlight, because we were very afraid of getting lost after hearing all the stories that the Indians told us about the place. Several years have passed since the National Institute of Culture of Cusco forced Boak Res Explorer to pay for the closure of the works and to permanently leave Coricancha for, among other charges, having endangered the structure of the convent and the safety of its visitors. In addition, the serious accusation of having deceived the authorities and having acted as vulgar treasure hunters. Since then, Rambla and his team of collaborators have had to settle for the investigation of the data obtained during the excavations and those provided by the GPR, ground penetration radar, equipment or georadars, a non-subsoil prospecting tool, in a range of depths that ranges between a few centimeters and 30 meters. All these studies and work seem to yield a series of unequivocal conclusions, and that is that, beneath the soil of Cusco, a vast and complex network of galleries of incredible magnitude extends, whose epicenter would be clearly located under the convent of Santo Domingo in an area that it was altered, filled with earth and rubble, and permanently closed by some Dominicans between 1985 and 1988 and that the same community of priests who currently live in the convent are unaware of these events. Of the past and who were their authors? If the Incas are right, the prophecy of return is about to be fulfilled, in 2033, when Pakakuti will complete 500 years of destruction. To continue following this fantastic search for the sacred city of Paititi and the return of the Inca, subscribe to this channel. Like, comment and share. Inca Greetings